antique album, uh, complete with photographs inside. Um, so it's $125, so I don't think it's coming home with me, but it's really gorgeous. It's about the right size. show you how to take this apart and create a travel journal and this travel journal that I'm going to be making is uh, going to be uh, for a month-long trip so it's going to be a lot of uh, we'll be, have a lot of stops and a lot of places and so I've given it lots and lots of thought and I've written down things that I know that I want to to do to this book and I have some ideas about some of the, um, the signatures about how to create those and do things a little bit differently than I have before. So I'm not going to tear the whole thing apart yet because I've got to figure out about my signatures and putting those in the book and I've got to know exactly how much space I'm going to need. But I am going to start taking it apart now and I'm going to do that right now. This is what it looks like in its raw form. It's missing its clasps in the front. It had clasps here too. And these latched onto it. And as I open it, you can see the pages. I love these foxed pages. And then most of this is going to come out fairly easily. Some of it's already coming out now. Back pages. And you can see it's in pretty rough shape. So we're going to start taking this apart. I want to keep some of these together because I'm going to put those back into the book and I'll show you about that later. But right now I'm going to start by getting rid of all the rest of the pieces, the bits in this book. Um, there are several pages at the beginning. There's an index for portraits and an album page which are just gorgeous and I'm going to keep those of course. And I'm just going to cut right here. And I'm not going to go too deep because I don't want to injure the book any more than what it already has been. But I want to separate the page from the book so we can get back to that really ugly spine. You can see it right here. It's this old glue. It's really gross. And if I keep this, I'm going to have to sand this and wear a mask. But that's We'll talk about that one later. Right now we're just going to gut the book and get the hinges off. And you can see there were pages back here that obviously were taken or removed from the book. So it must have been something personal to someone. So again we're just going to give it a little cut here. Just going to go lightly just to make sure that we're not hurting it anymore. I don't want to cut straight through. But see how easy that came off. Really simple. Okay, woohoo, we've got that done. Lots of gross uh, glue. And now we just have the album. And I'm going to take this hardware off. I'm just going to slip this little guy underneath here. And I used my X-Acto knife to pry underneath there first. And I'm just going to lightly lift up. Um, these things have a pretty good age to them, so it shouldn't take a whole lot of work. And uh, I had to do it on the other book, so that one came up really easily. I'm going to turn it around now and work on the second one, and then we'll deal with the hinge. So, pop it in there, and then poke this guy in here. Some screwdriver. And I'm not worried about scratching the book because I'm not sure what I'm going to do to it. I probably won't keep it original, but we'll see. There we go. Yay. Okay. Again, I'm just taking my X-Acto and I'm just going to slip it underneath here. I'm pretty sure these are glued on. The hinge really doesn't have anything to do with it. And 
it might take you a little bit of work to get it off. Okay. Got it. Yay. Okay. Now we're back to work on the front side. Got it. We're going to do it to the other one. Yay, got the other one too. And they're in pretty good shape too, so that'll be fun. All right. Now, we're going to start on the signatures. All right, before I actually sand the glue down on here, I wanna make sure that I can keep this intact or if I'm gonna to have to rip it out, um, I'm gonna make the signatures first and that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to be gone for a whole month, so I have a whole list of different places that we're visiting and uh, I know exactly how many days um, that we're gonna be spending in each place. And uh, so what I'm going to do, instead of just creating a lot of signatures and throwing it in the book, and then, um, you know, just haphazardly writing and, 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 uh, and creating as I go along and then hoping I have enough, I'm actually creating uh, the, uh, the signatures, the amount of pages in each signature that I think I will probably use. And that's based on having been gone for that amount of time before and about how much time I can spend on any one signature um, in this uh, journal. Uh, we, we were gone for about, I think, three weeks. So, um, so that's what I'm planning on doing. So I'm creating, and the very first signature I'm making is Mylar. And if you remember in this journal, if you watched my uh, other video, I had a little Mylar envelope to begin with and I uh, put tickets and things in the beginning. And I'm gonna do that again in this book. So I've made uh, uh, Mylar, um, I've started the Mylar um, envelope and I'm gonna stitch it in and then I'll finish it off with the tape. So I've got that all ready to go for the beginning. And then I'm going to be creating uh, mixed media um, pages and I want them to be just a little bit bigger um, so I measured that off and then I'm going to also be creating uh, sketch paper which I'm going to use for writing for writing paper and I'm going to be making um, signatures with that and so I'm going to get started and make all of my signatures based on how many days I'm going to be and how many places and I'll show you what's finished and then we'll decide whether we're keeping the spine Alrighty then, I have my signatures almost completely done and the way I did this was I looked at where we're going to be, how many days we're going to be, and I checked out my old journal and looked at about how much writing and artwork that I did for each place. Uh, so that, that's, that gave me an, an idea of how many pages to use. So I started with uh, the pocket that I'm going to make in the front with the Mylar, and that's all ready. And then uh, we'll be in Paris, um, and then Tuscany, and Florence. And then I have the inside to put photographs in, and I'm going to show you how to do that later, and how we're going to stitch that in the book and what we're going to do. Um, so then there's London, then we'll be at sea, 
then we'll be in Boston, then New York, and then pictures again. And that's all I'm going to do with the pictures. Um, so that'll be four pictures. And then Bermuda and then Nassau. And we're only going to be in Nassau one day, so I'm just going to use one piece of mixed media paper. And I'm going to cut that and show you that. So basically what I did was I simply used this as my template and then decided where I wanted, how I wanted it to be. Because once you stitch it in here, then it's going to stick out just a little bit, which I personally think is way yummy. I love seeing all the different edges of different papers and things like that. Um, and so uh, what I'm going to do is just deckle this edge real quick with these happy scissors, I call them. And and uh, it's just going to look great. And I'm not being exact as you can see. I like making art and not worrying about measuring things off and I like things sticking out and I like that wabi-sabi kind of look to things. Okay, so this is the last one and this is NASA. All right, so I have all of my signatures done and if I put them back in my book you can see I'm thinking I'm going to have to use this uh, I'm gonna have to use this entirely the whole album because once I get everything in there look how fat it gets um, with all the tickets and everything that you want to save and all the bits I'm, pr I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need this so and fortunately it's in pretty good shape um, plus your videographer really likes it. He's attached to it. So we're going to leave that in there. And then um, the next step will be, uh, actually I'm going to sand this off. That'll be my next step. And then I'll show you about stitching into the book. So I'm going to put this mask on. And I use this in the studio all the time when I have to sand or work on a project. And I know it's going to involve something old and yucky and who knows what was in it. So uh, I'm going to just put this on. and then I'm going to start working on it. So I hope you can still hear me <laughs> while I work on this. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, next step, I'm going to stitch in the signatures. Well, we're out of the uh, destruction phase and into creation, and um, I've been stitching signatures into my book um, while I'm waiting for the cover to dry. I used um, clear gesso on the outside and the inside of the, of the uh, photo album, and uh, there are two reasons for doing that. The first reason is that I want to uh, make sure that I stop the um, acid process because it's old and it's going to just basically eat itself and crumble into uh, tiny little um, crumbs of book um, eventually. And so that's going to stop it from doing that. And then the other reason that I did it is uh, as a primer because I'm going to be putting paper down. I'm going to be gluing um, my signatures in here into the spine. And, uh, and I want it to last as long as possible. So I'm waiting for that to dry. The inside is just almost finished. So I wanted to share a little tip with you. Um, and I did this before I gessoed the, the uh, photo album uh, cover. Remember when we pulled the hardware off, it left these bumps and you probably can't really see it but it, it pulled up on the album and so I just took my um, my screwdriver um, the bottom of it laid the book flat and then pushed down on them so that it would just go back into the book because I'm gonna end up covering this part and uh, you didn't want to see the bumps on the outside so that's a little tip uh, so we're gonna wait for that to dry and I'm going to finish stitching uh, my signatures into the muslin. I'm using muslin fabric and if you don't have muslin, I mean you can buy this at any 
fabric store. It's just plain muslin and I ironed it with a little bit of uh, fabric sizing to give it a, a little bit of stiffer um, feel so that it didn't move around as much. And I'm going to be using that uh, to stitch my signatures in and as well as creating the, um, the album cover um, frames. I'm putting these back into the book and then they'll be back to back and I'm just going to insert photos in the inside front and back and cover it with a tissue paper. And in order to do that, I'm going to uh, glue it in with the muslin and then stitch through as if it's just a signature. And then I'll cover that. And I'll, I probably will wait until we get back home from our trip to do that. But I don't know, I, I might not. We, we'll have to wait and see. So it, it'll be just like that. And we're gonna stitch that in. And uh, so I'm gonna get started and get, get finished uh, stitching the signatures. Um, when I get to the end, this will all be fin filled with signatures. As you can see, I still have a lot to go. So I'm gonna do that and I'm not gonna bore you with it. But um, but we're going to get, get started on that right now, and then I'll show you what it looks like finished. So um, I'm at the end. I've actually got all of my signatures stitched into the muslin, um, except for the last one, and I wanted to share, uh, show, the, show you that, share it with you. Um, if you saw my handmade journal with Tyvek, then you know how I stitched it in and I used um, uh, paper clips to hold it in place and then um, I gave all the different techniques for doing that but I just wanted to share with you I'm going to use the end of my scissors to just um, to just um, flatten the waxed uh, linen which is what I'm using to stitch it in and a, and a large needle and because this book is going to get so much abuse, uh, I've been stitching, um, I've been, I've been uh, tying knots uh, two and three times because I'm going to throw this around and we're going to go to the beach. I'm going to, we're going to hang out by the pool. Um, you know, it's going to go to bistros and all different kinds of places. So um, I'm going to just be, you know, tossing it here and there. And I know I'm just going to give it a lot of abuse. So I want to make sure that they stay in. So two and three. And then stitching it in. Can you see that? And just poking it in there. And then in here, ouch, try not to stab yourself, and back. So you can see all the different stitches. I'm not worried about it being neat and pretty because it's going to be on the inside. And I, I, I prefer that actually. I like that wabi-sabi look. I, if you want perfect, buy a book in a store because art books should be imperfect and celebrate the imperfection of life and the artistic nature, I think. Okay, to make that go down, I'm just going to use my awl. I hope you can see that. And I'm going to do one more. And I'm going to leave the tails because I might find little art charms or whatnot to stick on there to, to tie in Europe. Okay, so that's the very last one. And this is the front here. So here is my, uh, well, it will be an envelope as soon as I uh, use the washi tape on the bottom and the top. And I'm going to show you that. Um, but here are all the spreads. And I wanted to share this with you, uh, the technique for getting this into the book. Now remember, it's going to be glued shut and there'll be a photo on the inside facing this way and a photo on the inside facing this way and it'll it'll be uh, it'll be shut like that so I'm going to have I'm going to cover this with something else. What I wanted to share with you about this is that when you're putting these together if you have two that are just, you know, apart like this, it's actually the best way to do it. So you just put them together. <clears throat> Hope you can see that. 
and then put your muslin here, cut it to size, and then glue it. And when you glue it, then stand it up so that it's not laying flat. Because if it lays flat, it's going to be stiff. It's not going to be good. I mean, you can leave a little bit of space, but still, I, I advise you to, um, to let it stand. So you've got it glued down. I'm not doing this very well, but it's glued down and you're standing it up so that it's really easy to stitch in. If you have, uh, if you have them and they're already together and you have this kind of uh, cardboard uh, that sticks up, you're going to want to cut that off, sand it down so that it's not in, it'll be just um, really difficult once you get it in the book. Okay, little tip there. So I've got it all set and now I'm going to put my gloves on and I'm going to glue it into my book. Okay, I'm going to be really liberal with my regular gel matte medium and I'm going to glue the spine first and then the sides and this is going to take a while to dry but once we get this in it'll be time for embellishments so this is the front and I'm going to get it as flat as I can and it didn't I didn't use up all of the space that I had um, in the spine between the spines and the reason I didn't do that is because I know I'm going to put all kinds of good things in. I'm going to put envelopes and little tip in pages and I'm going to glue all kinds of things together so it's going to get fatter and fatter and fatter and uh, so I know I'm going to need extra space so it's going to stick out, right? So that's why. Alright, so it's all glued in. We're going to let it dry and I'm going to come back and embellish it. Embellishments. This is the part that everybody loves. Uh, I decided to uh, use tissue paper. I've kept the album and I used tissue paper on the back and on the front I simply glued that down with a regular gel matte medium and then I had this antique postcard of the Eiffel Tower and I've been saving that because this is the first place we're going to go is to Paris so I thought it would be fun to put it on the front and it's just, this is just simply a ripped piece of black paper underneath to make it show off and then I stitched buttons and I left this um, undone so you could see I stitched a button to the front and one to the back and my plan is to be able to run the ribbon back and forth like that to tie it up which I think will be really fun so I simply poked two holes in and then stitched the button in with wax linen hope you can see that and then I'm going to go back and I will put some paper here probably a black and white paper and keep the whole album in a black and white mood which is very Parisian, don't you think? And then my plan is to stitch some ribbons onto this little piece. I've just tied this ribbon on here. And then I will stitch these on so that they will be on the front like that. And I have my pocket finished. And I'm going to be um, using, uh, for every place we're going, there'll be a fabric tag, which I've made out of this antique ribbon. I love this, this is so yummy. Um, and so they'll just graduate all the way down the book to all the different places that we're going. So this is how it looks. And I'm loving it. I think it's really going to be a sweet journal. So you asked lots of questions on the last video about the perfect travel journal and I wanted to answer those questions for you today. So the first one is do you do an entry all in one sitting and yes I do. I sit down after the day um, is finished we go back to our Airbnb, our hotel room, whatever and I just jot it all down. Um, then the other question is how do you keep it neat and organized? Gosh, I don't know. I just throw it on there. If I don't like it I can paint it over or do whatever but I guess I'm kind of a neat neck. 
Um, and then do you plan your pages out beforehand? Absolutely. Uh, I, have it, I have it all in my mind about what I want to do and you can see me the way I, I organized the whole journal so that I planned every stop we were going to make and what I, how many pages I wanted for each place based on how many nights we're going to stay in one place. Um, and then do you have a vision of your journal before you begin? Uh, well, I didn't. Um, not, I really don't. I just kind of came up with it. And um, the vision for this journal, um, I wanted there to be a sense of continuity between the two of them. And um, so this one and this one, they kind of look like they want to live together. Um, and I just like the way it looked. So I loved keeping uh, the continuity of the tissue paper on the, in, on the um, outside and the back. I just thought it would be kind of cool. And then as far as the vision on the inside, it's just going to depend on what we do and where we go and the places that we see. Um, then I had another question. Uh, if you had to estimate how many pages in a journal would you say? And usually I can do a page um, per stay. So if we're going to be in Paris three, three days, then probably a good three days worth of uh, journaling. Uh, three pages rather worth of journaling with artwork and adding bits and pieces. Now, if you run out of pages, you can always do a tip in. So that's pretty cool. And the last question you guys asked me, what do you take in your travel bag when you're gone away? So I take scraps with me. I take a glue stick with me, which I cover over with gel medium once I get home. Otherwise it will just fall apart. Uh, rounded scissors. Uh, brushes, water brushes, travel brushes, pit pen, ink tents, pencils, a good pencil, and a travel sharpener. That's what I take. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, I can't believe we're at Chow for now, but I think it's taken us about a whole week to, uh, or a week and a half to do this. Um, and so I hope you enjoyed it. We love having you here. Thank you for your thumbs up. Thank you for your subscriptions. We really appreciate it. And um, ciao for now.